hepatitis and i dr nutan mahto from kaya chikitsa department on behalf of our institute government ayurveda medical college tripunitara welcome you all to the national pre webinar lecture on introduction to practical aspects on trigunas let's begin the section with a prayer for that i would like to invite dr vishnu datta pg scholar government ayurveda college tripunitara to start the prayer ಜಾಗಾಶಕ್ತಾಶೇಷಕಾಯ ಪ್ರಸೃತಾಶೇಷಾನ್ಸುಖ್ಯಮೋಹಾಚಾನೂರ್ವೈದ್ಯಾಯ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ತಸ್ಮೈ ಯೋ ಪೂರ್ವೈದ್ಯಾಯ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ತಸ್ಮೈ a very warm good evening and namaste to all before we get started let me throw some light on the purpose of organizing this pre webinar inward qualities are classified in ayurveda into three distinct categories called three gunas that is sattva rajas and tamas these three gunas in different proportions influence the mental and intellectual caliber of every individual gunas mainly indicates the attitude which which human mind functions dominance of gunas determines the individual personality three gunas three gunas have a unique concept in, in nature dinacharya ritucharya pathogenesis and in treatment as ayurveda people we are more focused on three doshas three doshas are reflections of three gunas as body and mind are connected to each other three gunas have equal importance as that of three doshas so we want to express our heartfelt thanks to dr sunil sir associate professor department of kaya chikitsa for organizing this national webinar so to begin with this pre webinar lecture we now request our professor dr sunil john sir to deliver the welcome address over to you sir Yeah, very warm good morning good evening to all respected uh, gurus my dear pg scholars other delegates respected delegates from all over india and abroad is very proud for that a webinar with a rarely discussed topic like trigunas but a very relevant one is much interested by it. around 2000 esteemed delegates registered for the event trigunatra ayurveda college started by the ruling king of Uh, the different number in 1926 we have eight pg departments and our 450 bed hospital was inaugurated by great former president abdul kalam as all of you know the pre webinar and the premier session on tomorrow uh, related with trigun sattva raja and tama are equally important in ayurvedic basic concepts like tamas but uh, unfortunately most of us not regularly practice with the same in clinical situations when a patient coming into entering into your clinic if you are observing their dress code color of dress color of their watch strap and the all other appearances a good clinician can start evaluating his trigunas sattva raja tamo products assessment plan assessment planning related with trigunas the management we provide better research in your practice and also in way of thinking today i think the pre webinar by dr arya who is our pg uh, scholar will empower you for the premier sessions coming on tomorrow i welcome our respected 
previous HODs, Murali sir, Remini madam, Shailama madam, and other all faculties from colleges and others, other delegates present here. I invite Dr. Arya for her presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Uh, that was a uh, very warm welcome. I feel so privileged and excited to discuss on the topic of uh, Tribunas. Uh, now we'll go into the presentation. Guru is the one who dispels darkness and brings light to the heart of friends. That was what Dr. Prakash Mangal Sheri was. A true guru, a guide, a teacher, a mentor, a clinician, academician. He was a guru. Thank you, sir, for all the guidance you have given us. Introduction to the practical aspects of Triguna. I guess the video would be working now, so please reduce your volumes. Uh, observe the video, that's all. I'm sorry, it, it's still not working, so we'll go to the next slide. So these are the few questions I had in my mind when I was... Uh, about to begin uh, this press, this uh, you know, learning the subject of Trigunas. Because um, most of the people I asked, most of the Ayurvedic people I asked, uh, they told that you know, this is just a philosophical concept, it's a spiritual concept, it has nothing to do with clinics, it has no use, it has no practical utility. Uh, what, what can we do with Triguna? You know, we can do something if we can do something that is with Tridoshas and nothing about to do with uh, Trigunas. So, this webinar is a venture to uh, bring into the forefront the practical aspects of the trigunas so with this i hope that you'll get a small idea a bit introduction to tomorrow's session so this presentation um, will be a new beginning i guess as nikola tesla the energy-based inventor a great physicist has said the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence we are about to study a non-physical phenomena, which is the Trigunas. So when we venture uh, learning a non-physical phenomena, you know, it's a dif difficult thing. Physics is um, an interesting subject to most of uh, many of the uh, people, but quantum physics is difficult because uh, it says a particle acts as a wave also. So it, it's difficult. So learning the non-physical phenomena is a really tough task. Let this be a good beginning. So the three gunas, what is a guna? Guna is something which attracts us to a dravya. The at attribute which attracts us to a dravya, that quality, that is a guna. So three gunas are the attributes of all the universe. There are three basic gunas in the existence that is present in every creature. So this is otherwise called as mahagunas. Part one of the presentation will be about the Theoretical aspects of Trigunas. Ayurveda views the body as Sattva Atma Sharira in a conjunction. This is mentioned in the Shari Rasthana. But then when it comes to treatment, we tend to explain more of it based on Tradosha. Uh, atma has no disease. It is not um, it, it is not prone to disease. It never develops diseases. And then we focus on the other two aspects, that is sattva, that is their sattva means manas and sharira and manas. We view manas and sharira in, through the perspective of tridoshas. But then shastras like uh, darshanas, like yoga, views the sharira in a different way. That is as, uh, sorry, as panja koshas. There are five koshas in, there are five koshas. That is what we are made up of. And this understanding is aided by the understanding of trigunas. So yoga darshana views mind and body in a different way. They are different layers of the same sharira. It is not that mind and body are separate. They are different layers. And then 
trigunas are the very basis of our existence and then we tend to compare ayurveda with modern science uh, which explains human body on the basis of organ systems and this concept you know is very very uh, gross you know the measurements everything is gross we can quantify it actually but then when we study a non physical phenomena like a trigona we cannot go with uh, a science like modern to help it because see yoga darshana and ayurveda had it can be said as parallel sciences you know they were there in the uh, ancient period so most of the ayurveda doctors or most of the students who come to learn ayurveda would have learned darshanas before so this knowledge would have helped them a lot in understanding uh, the tri tridoshas also because they already knew what is trigunas are so they already knew the the loga purusha sambhyam you know the uh, what what happens outside is also there inside uh so they it it is uh, a parallel science but we cannot compare uh, yoga shastra with modern science in modern science there is no understanding of trigona or trigodosha so it's it's a uh, you know it's a flow from the subtle yoga to the gross modern science so we are going to study the subtlest of the elements that is trigonas Indian psychology, which is very famous throughout the world, which has given significant contributions in the field of uh, psychology, uh, the ancient seekers have learnt a lot uh, of the workings of mind. So it's called, you know, knowledge from the uh, east. It is called. So this has roots in mainly two darshanas. Among the shat darshanas, Indian psychology has its roots in Sankhya and Yoga darshana, and then. the literature on sankhya darshana is well written in sankhya karika written by kapila maharshi and both the principles of uh, sankhya and yoga can be seen well written in bhagavad gita the authentic textbook of yoga darshana alone would be patanjali's yoga sutra i have not uh, gone into depths of it so i have written only these two words sushruta so, says paratantra avalokanam learning the other sciences will help in improving the buddhi and metta so we learn what is written in these two uh, treatises so that we understand trigunas in a better way so uh, before going to that i need to say a few words of bhagavad gita because it's very important that uh, we we often tend to take it as a, as a religious textbook but see it's not a uh, it's not the right way of approaching bhagavad gita because it is rather a ancient scientific literature which is a conversation between Ar arjuna and krishna arjuna was about to fight the war and uh, in the war front he had a uh, krishna with him but then he stood confused he he was a very good warrior but he was confused because he has to fight and kill his own relatives so in that condition arjuna been into a moha and choga kind of situation he was fully uh, in a confused state as to what to do and then krishna comes krishna comes and gives him certain advices which helps him uh, overcome the confusion and he comes out of his moha to a satvik state and this is the story line but what we learn uh, through this story is that the mechanism of human mind different techniques of mind control these are all well explained in the text with detailed explanation of trigunas so with this uh, we'll go into trigunas trigunas are three we know that they are sattva rajas and tamas sattva come stems from sad sad sado bhavam sattvam that is sattva is a uh, real thing the reality the real nature uh, the truth there are many meanings of uh, sattva the being a, a physical a, a being is called a sattva sattvam is also used in uh, synonymous with a uh, manas even a, a living being is also called a sattva so sattva uh, rajas and then rajas rajas comes from raj ranjane ranjana that which imparts color that which imparts raga that is called rajas tamas comes from tamu glanau that means that which causes glani that is fatigue in the body that is tamas so these three are the trigunas these three are essential they are supporting us in many ways and then among these these the two that is rajas and tamas have a dushana swabhav that is 
one after some after an optimal level the rajas and tamas becomes uh, very bad very bad for us you know it it actually harms us that is they have a dosha existence also but sattva is always guna it does not have a dosha level of existence in sankhya kariga there is a mention of how the whole universe is formed so we we can compare to the uh, you know it, it it's a big bang uh, that happened so maybe we are uh, uh, nearing understanding of what how this creation is but what sankhya karika explains is that from the avyakta that is uh, something that is not vyakta there uh, mahat is formed mahat is a universal consciousness or it can be also said as buddhi it's a consciousness from that ahankara is formed ahankara means ainas ainas that is ego ego has three parts sattva rajas and tamas these three are ahankaras and then with the predominance of sattva and rajas rajas both these ahankaras ekadasha indriyas are formed with the predominance of rajas and tamas panja tanmatra and panja mahabudas are formed so just see that this is the predominance of rajas and tamas that is coming together you cannot have a substance without tamas you cannot have something without sattva if these three are present in everything so it is like a predominance so uh, the ekadasha indriyas ekadasha indriya indriyas also include manas and then manas is formed as it is a ubhendriya we know that and then uh, the manas has three parts it is formed out of sattva rajas tamas and it is formed it consists of three parts that is sattva rajas and tamas so if we compare manas to a house with three rooms we can say that uh, sattva is one room rajas is another room tamas is with and the room and they are very close to each other so there are only three rooms so if we want if we come out of one room we naturally enter the other room so that is how we are that is if we are in a sattvic state we can immediately shift to a rajasic state depending on what uh, what stimuli we get we can uh, change to rajasic or change to tamasic forms that is how easy it is and then this is just a simile okay i hope you understand next what sankhya karika says about trigunas is that sattvam lagu prakashakam rajas is chala and ubashtambhakam tamas is guru and varanagam the effects of sattva is preeti rajas is apreeti tamas is vishadam see among the trigunas sattva is the subtlest element it is very subtle and and when it reaches tamas it becomes a bit more gross it's not gross but it becomes a bit more gross and sattva is the lagu element lagu lightness buoyancy and then tamas is the opposite tamas is guru the rajas is chalam it's the activating principle so we'll go into the meaning of these terms sattva is buoyant buoyancy means uh, that which helps you float uh, that which keeps the ships afloat it can sail through the sea however the tides be it can sail easily because of the buoyancy that is how sattvic people will be like it is illuminating that is prakashakam and it causes contentment that is a sattvic person will be content he will be happy with what he have he does not go behind too many things rajas is chalam it is the activating principle it causes it causing discontentment that is a rajasic person will never be content he will be wanting more and more and more so he'll he'll be activated to do something more also and tamas is guru that is i don't know if heavy is the correct word for it but i can say better word would be uh, gross and then it causes veiling or covering varanagam means avaragam and it causes depression depression is uh, again uh, uh, almost you know term for vishadam so is that clear next what we move to bhagavad gita what bhagavad gita says is that sattvam is nirmalam because it is nirmala it does not have any malam it is prakashakam it brings light it illuminates and it is anamayam and rajas is ragatmakam it is ragatmakam see the word ragam here ragam is excessive desire ragatmakam it is full of ragam it's full of desire it for it is formed out of trishna and sangam 
Trishna Sangha Samudhavam. Uh, Trishna is desire again, and um, Sangha is attachment. Tamas is Atnyan. Atnyan means there is no Atnyan, there is no knowledge, there is ignorance, and it causes moha, Mohanam. That is, it causes a person to become um, completely lack of knowledge. There is total ignorance, that is, total confusion, and somewhat delude, delusions. And then Bhagavad Gita also say that uh, these uh, gunadika persons will be attached to certain things. That is, a sattika purusha will be attached to sukha and jnana. Sukha and jnana. That is, he will be seeking knowledge. And thus, he will be uh, seeking sukha also. Rajas is, has karma sangha. The rajasika person will have to do something or the other. He cannot sit uh, and rest. He has to do something. That is karma sangha. Tamas, the person will be attached to all the negative things, all the lazy kind of things. Pramada, alasya, and nidrada. He'll be lazy. He does not have any karma. And then uh, Sankhikarika also explains uh, the vritti, how how these uh, element, how these qualities interact with each other. So there are four vrittis, out of which uh, we can easily explain first two. That is. First thing is Anyonya Abhibhavam. What is Abhibhavam? Abhibhavam means one comes up and it overpowers the others. That is, when one guna is predominant, it overpowers the other two gunas. Like Sattva is predominant, Rajas and Tamas goes down. Rajas is predominant, Sattva and Tamas goes down, and the opposite. This is Anyonya Abhibhavam. See this? This is Rajas and Tamas coming together. Tamas, as we already mentioned, is an uh, inactive principle. Sattva is the knowledge. Tamas is the inactive thing. For a activity, Tamas needs the association of Rajas. So Rajas goes and with Tamas and goes into some kind of activity. Since Tamas is Atnyanam, this activity would mostly be very bad activity. But unlike that, when Rajas is in association with Sattva, because Sattva's knowledge, when Rajas, the activating principles there, this will cause a good activity. There will be clarity to perception. There will be clarity in decision making so that the person can do the right things at the right time. That is Anyonya Ashrayatvam. These two, they come together, you know, Rajas or Tamas or Sattva or Rajas, and they come together and act. This is called Anyonya Ashrayatam. There are two other vrittis also, but it is a bit difficult to comprehend. Anyonya Janaka and Anyonya Mithunigrida Bhavam. I guess tomorrow's sessions will give further right, uh, light into that. Triguna in Ayurveda. So this is all about, uh, this is not all about it, but this is a brief description about uh, what is uh, written in Sankhya Karika and Bhagavad Gita. Of course, Bhagavad Gita has a lot of different things uh, because it classifies uh, the Bhutti, Tabas, and many, many, many things based on Sattvika, Rajasa, and Tamasa. So um, it's beyond the scope of the subject or beyond, it, it might take a long time for discussing all that. So we'll jump into what is Triguna in Ayurveda. So uh, whenever we talk about Ayurveda, whenever we discuss something in Ayurveda, we tend to uh, bring this slogan forth. This, this is something very we are very proud of. That is the Swasta Lakshana. Samadosha, Samadrishya, Samadhadu Malakriya, Prasanna Atmendriya Manaha, Swasta Itya Vidyate. Does it have any relation to Tribunas? If yes, what? This is what we need to think about. This is what the idea of this webinar is about. So uh, we'll go into this later. By the way, when you go through the slides, you will get the idea of what Prasanatmi Dremana is with respect to Trigunas. If Ayurveda can be defined in one word, it is Guna, says Robert Sobotha. But in Ayurveda textbooks, see the Triguna mentioned is very less or it is rather scattered. So among the Gunas, we have already discussed the definition of Guna, that is attribute or quality which attracts us to a substance. Uh, but while coming to Trigunas, there is no mention of Triguna in the 41 Gunas of Charada. So where is it mentioned? That is the Adhikarna. Adhikarna of uh, Trigunas 
ഇറ്റ് കാൻ ബി സീൻ ഇൻ സൂത്രസ്ഥാന ഇറ്റ് കാൻ ബി സീൻ ഇൻ വിമാനസ്ഥാന ശാരീരസ്ഥാന നിദാന ആൻഡ് ചികിത്സാസ്ഥാന so in different ways we can see that we are not going to in depth learning of all these it's just an introduction so sutra sthana we can see the pathological the physiological aspects of trigunas the pathological aspects of trigunas as uh, well as a, a, a few context then vimana sthana manovigaras whenever the manovigaras are formed it is formed out of rajas and tamas is mentioned so these they are just vague mentionings you know we have to gather all this information and um, read them together so that we get a better picture sushruta begins his first chapter sutra uh, sharira sthana with the srishti prakriya of sankhya adopted from sankhya darshana and then he says that uh, after discussing the ahankaras and all that the sattva rajas tamas there is a uh relation between the manoguna this mahaguna would be a better word here mahagunas and panjabhutas that is agasha pahabhuta will be predominantly of satvika guna vayu will be of rajo bahulam agni sattva rajo bahulam abha sattva tamo bahulam prithvi tamo bahulam what, what is the use of this understanding we uh, we would have learned this word. what is what is the implication of understanding this we uh, we see everything in the trudosha perspective so now we are starting to see things through the perspective of uh, manogunas so uh, we know the panjabhuta predominance of trudosha so we can indirectly go into the understanding of which uh, manoguna mahaguna is present in uh, that particular situation we'll we'll come to a small example later so this is tridosha and manas relation all the three doshas are involved in the normal functioning of manas vada prana udana vyana mainly and pitta sadhaka and alojaka pitta alojaka is ruba alojana dasmadam but uh, buddhi vaisheshika alojana uh, pitta is involved as bela says and kapham avalambakam and tarpakam among these i would like to bring special attention to sadhaka pittam സാധക പിത്തം ബുദ്ധി മേധാഭിമാനാദ്യേ അഭിപ്രേതാർത്ഥ സാധകം സാധകം ഹൃദ്ഗതം പിത്തം ദിസ് ഇസ് വോട്ട് ഇസ് വി ഹവ് ലേൺഡ് ഇൻ ആശാകൃതയ സൂത്രസ്ഥാനം ബുദ്ധി മേധ അഭിമാനം ഇൻ ഓൾ ദീസ് തിങ് സാധക പിത്ത ഇസ് ഇൻവോൾഡ് സീ ദിസ് അഭിമാൻ സം സം വേർഡ് സിമിലർ ടു അഭിമാന ഇൻ ദി രജോ ഗുണയുക്ത പുരുഷ ലക്ഷണം ലേറ്റർ കമ്മിങ് ടു അഭിപ്രേത അർത്ഥ സാധകം artha sadakam which all arthas we are going to attain so there can be indriya arthas they can be mano arthas uh, there can be purusha arthas also and attaining these needs the proper functioning of sadaka pittam that's what this line Im- implies so pittam is basically agni so we have discussed the panjabhuta relation see panjabhuta relation of uh, agni and the manoguna sattva rajo bahulam agni and uh, pittam is agneyam so and sadaka pittam is also agneyam so sattva and raja rajas would be needed or it would be the constraints of of sadaka pittam rather sattva and rajas are basic elements or uh, constituents of manas that helps in abhipreda artha sadakam so what are these artha purusha coming to purusha artas only now uh, dharma artha kama and moksha and essentially they should be based on dharma so if one action is to be based on dharma that should be based on sattva guna only with the help of rajo guna he'll be able to attain the arthas but sattva guna is needed because uh, there should be a clarity in perception there should be clarity while decision making because otherwise if tamas is predominant this sattva can come down this rajas can come down so this purushartha attaining the purushartha will be a question so this is uh, how we can uh, correlate i guess with uh, pit dustra doshas and uh, the mahagunas through the panjabhuta relation next coming to manasika prakriti we, we are discussing the trigunas in ayurveda with respect to physiology manasika prakriti first thing Sushruta has given a detailed explanation of Manasika Prakriti in Shariram, first chapter. Uh, I'm not going into the different types of uh, Manasika Prakriti, different Kaya, because 
it is again a big subject so we'll be discussing what the predominant qualities of a satvika purusha will be rajasya purusha tamasya purusha will be so it's so that has i guess has given a better explanation compared to vagbada because vagbada it's, it's it's just a br brief explanation so how to understand the prakriti is again controversial subject but i'm not going to controversies because uh, it is difficult but through the uh, through the lectures of a satvika purusha tamasika etc we can understand uh, we can get some clues for understanding trigunas in prakriti as well as in the uh, vigirti also these are the lectures of satvika gunadikya purusha andrsham syam samvibhaga rujida tidiksha satyam dharmam astikyam jnanam buddhi metha smriti dridhi anabishanga andrsham syam doing some akrura karma that is what is called all these terms are well explained by dalhana so uh, whenever we need an explanation of a part in a samhita when uh, it's not clear we can go into the commentaries so dalhana has given a detailed explanation of most of all these words in in this part andrsham syam is akrura karma he does not uh, do any krura karma samvibhaga rujida that is sharing uh, tidiksha is kshama forbearance satyam dharma astikyam these are all very clear i guess anabishanga anabishanga would not be clear anabishanga is uh, doing something without seeking the fruits of it without uh, wanting to uh, be uh, recognized as having done that thing dridhi dridhi see dridhi is a feature of satvika purusha we can see the opposite in rajasa so this is a satvika purusha he is a righteous truthful and virtuous kind of person with good intellectual capacity and uh, emotional intelligence he can control his impulses that is what dridhi means dridhi means the niyamatmika buddhi that uh, which controls the impulses so dridhi is there with satvika purusha controls his impulses acts without seeking the fruits of action and he is a compassionate human being rajasa purusha ദുഃഖ ബഹുളത ആടനശീലത അതൃതി അഹങ്കാരം ആന്തൃതികത്വം അകാരുണ്യം ദമ്പം മാനം ഹർഷം കാമ ക്രോധ ദീസ് ആർ ദ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് രാജസിക പുരുഷ ദുഃഖ ബഹുളത ഐ നീഡ് ഫോക്കസ് ഐ നീഡ് യു ടു ഫോക്കസ് ഓൺ ദ ടേം ദുഃഖ ബഹുളത അതൃതി ആൻഡ് ക്രോധ കാമ കാമം ദംഭ മാനം സി അഭി ുംസ്റ്റ് <laughs> is unhappy irritable and impulsive impulsive is the term for adrati wandering wandering is that andra atana shilata ambitious driven easily says lies you know he can lie and egoistic passionate the satvika purusha was compassionate he can include everyone he can uh, you know he can be loving to everyone but this person is like uh, he loves only one or he is uh, attached to someone that's all and the others he cannot accept maybe so that is what uh, passionate and compassionate that is where it differs and swagbada says about the talkative nature of uh, rajya purusha which is also worthwhile mentioning here rajasam bahubhashitam manakruddamba mansara says swagbada bahubhashitam it is just typical we can easily identify those who are very very talkative and very ambitious driven and competitive kind of people are mostly rajasika and this is tamas tamoguna yukta purusha vishaditvam there it is dukkha bhuda that is different here it is vishaditvam that is totally into a state of depression നാസ്തിക്യം അധർമ്മശീലത ബുദ്ധി നിരോധ അജ്ഞാനം ദുർമേധസ്വം അകർമ്മശീലത നിദ്രാലുത്വം സി അധർമ്മശീലത ബുദ്ധി നിരോധ ദുർമേധസ്വം ദി ഓപ്പോസിറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദീസ് ക്യാൻ ബി സീൻ ഇൻ സാത്വിക പുരുഷ ബുദ്ധി ആൻഡ് മേധ ആർ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് സാത്വിക പുരുഷ അജ്ഞാനം അജ്ഞാനം ഇസ് എ ഫീച്ചർ ഓഫ് തമസ് വൈൽ ജ്ഞാനം ഇസ് വിത്ത് സാത്വിക പുരുഷ സോ വാട്ട് ഇസ് നാസ്തികം മീൻസ് നാസ്തികം ഡസ് നോട്ട് ഓൺലി മീൻ ഗോഡ് ഡൽഹാസ് 
belief in uh, paraloga paraloga dharma all, all comes under the astika belief and he is a non believer so this is what our tamasika purushan will be like depressed he can have criminal tendencies that's the word adharma shilata uh, because he don't fear anything he don't fear god he don't fear anything he don't believe in rebirth also and then uh, he might commit things based on his will so um, he cannot do it alone of course with the help of rajas only he can do but he can have criminal tendencies adharma shilata he has less intellectual capacity and is lazy sleepy and the procrastinator kind of person so this is the explanation this is a short explanation of the manasika prakritis i hope this is clear and it will help in understanding people on a better level we tend to understand people on vada pitta kapha dosha prakriti level that is that is very good way of understanding but we also need to learn this because as uh, vada prakriti can be vada pitta prakriti uh, you know dual uh, two at least two of them come together mostly so vada pitta prakriti can be sattvic that is one way vada pitta prakriti can be rajasic so it might be uh, terrible uh, because they will be too much driven too much of activity uh, they will be always in a high high level of activity so vada uh, pitta the tamas uh, it will be very difficult because there is activity at the level of vadam and then pitta also wants to transform something but then tamas comes and covers up these so there should be a uh, understanding of manasika purusha manasika gunas also for uh, understanding people better so what's the next uh, area where trigunas come into uh, play what where the physiologically trigunas are mentioned that is nidra context of nidra in the context of nidra it is said that nidra is shleshma tamodbhava sushrutam shleshma tamodbhavam so we know that uh, it is due to kapha we feel sleepy but it is also due to tamas that we feel sleepy that is the normal sleep we are discussing about the normal sleep that is during night we feel sleepy that is when our shodhasas gets filled with shleshma and tamas this is normal and i am not talking about uh, dushta kapha and uh, uh, tamas this is normal level of kapha shleshma and tamas which is helping us restore our uh, system body uh, so that we can do uh, good things the next day we can be energized for the next day so the this famous slogan uh, the effects of nidra uh, proper and alpa nidra that is nidrayatam sugam dukham pushti karshim balavaram prishta klebada jnanam atnyanam jeevitam nacha uh, see uh, we have discussed that atnyanam is uh, tamas but tamas the extreme of uh, avarana is uh, the extreme of tamas so that is marana so this also needs to be kept in mind and jnanam jnanam uh, is the result of proper balance of sattva rajas and tamas ajnanam is when tamas overpass the next condition is hridayam that is while explaining hridayam vagbara says sattva adi dhama hridayam what is the importance of this explanation satvadi dhama hridayam satvadi satva rajas and tamas all reside in hridayam so there is a controversy as to whether hridayam is anatomical heart or uh, is it brain or it is the hridaya desha uh, i am not going to any of them i am just uh, in referring to the anatomical heart so manas uh, manovah shodhas has its mula sthanam in hridayam though it is spread all over the body uh, as says chakrabani uh manas is located mainly in the hridaya because uh, when we see the context of unmada avasmara that is the reference so is there uh, a relation between rudroga and the sattva rajasthama guna we have to think about that is uh, type a personality and type b personality are the types of personalities mentioned in the modern psychology type a is the uh, ambitious driven and competitive kind of person somewhat like the rajasika purusha so this these people have a tendency for uh, ischemic heart diseases uh, in that respect can we say that uh, this rajoguna purusha or increased rajoguna is seen in those with heart diseases or if uh, if yes uh, what is the other that is if tamas is increased to a certain extent what what heart diseases can be caused we need to think about this subject i guess so these are the instances a uh, few instances where um, 
Sattar as Islam is mentioned in the Norman physiology of um, human existence. We go into pathology now. Mano Vigaras. So first slogan, Mangal slogan, Raga di Rogan, Sadadan Shatan. Uh, if not written for everyone knows it. Raga di Rogan. What, the, what are the Raga these? Raga these are Raga, Dwesha, Lopa, Moha, Mata, and Malsat. Yeah. Along with it, a uh, few others are mentioned, Lobha, Irsha, etc., in the context of Dharmiya Vegas. All these emotions have to be kept under control. They are all Dharmiya Vegas. And but what causes them? Shuddhasi Chedaso, Rajas Tamopya, Ranjanam, Ragaha. Basis of all stress and anxiety are the Ragadis, which are caused by Rajas and Tamodoshas. So these are the basic culprits. Now we come to uh, uh, nearing the end of Ayurveda perspective of Tridosha and Triguna. Trigunas, uh, Satvaraju Santamas, have attributes like Laghu, Chala, and Guru. This Laghu Guna is seen with uh, Vada as well as with Pitta. And Chala Guna is seen as an attribute of Vada, Guru as an attribute of Kapha. So we can infer that whenever the uh, Kapha is increased in the body, there will be a chance for tamo guna vritti in the sharidam. When it becomes so high and it becomes dushna to the body, it can be called tamo dosha. And vada, similarly vada again, when vada increases so much, then it causes, especially due to a chala guna vritti, when ruksha, leku, chala guna vritti occurs. Uh, if a person does not sleep well, uh, and many other, you know, the different kinds of lifestyle nowadays can cause Vada Vritti in Sharira, it can uh, lead to a Rajoguna Vritti in Manas. So, this we have to understand. Along with the understanding of Tridoshas, we have to understand the Triguna basis of uh, what happens with these Guna Athike, Chala Guna Vritti in Manas, Guru Guna Vritti in the level of Manas. But coming to Sattva, Sattva it does not cause it is Anamaya. Uh, so the, sattva there is no disease even if sattva increases there is no disease when sattva increases what happens due to anunya abhibhavan the other two comes down when rajas and tamas comes down there is there are no ragadis you know we are under total control we are our, our impulses are under our control our decisions are very good our uh, clarity is so high our thinking is also very pure so that is anamaya when sattva increases it's okay and then uh, that is excellence uh, can be seen in Sara Purusha maybe. And then this Lekhu Guna. So I, I, I had a thought whether va, when Vada Pitta increases to uh, the Lekhu Guna of Vada Pitta increases, whether Sattva Guna increases. That, that's not a pathological state. That's what we need to think. Because Vada causes uh, the normal, Vada helps in the normal functioning of Manas. That is Niyanta Pranayita Chamanasaha. Vada Kala Kaliyam explains the normal functions of Manas in the uh, normal uh, functions of Vata in the Sharira as well as in the uh, universe. So it says uh, Vata is responsible for controlling as well as activating Manas. So that is uh, Pitta also, Sataka Pitta we have seen. It, this Sattva Guna is needed actually for the functioning of it. So this Sattva part is about the physiology and Rajas and Chala, uh, Rajas and Tamas can be involved in physiology as well as after some extent it can go to the pathology. This is the conclusion of Trigunas and Ayurveda. With this, we come to the conclusion of the theory part. So in physiology, the Mansika Pragrati, Nidra, and the context of Hridaya, there is the mention of Trigunas, and the pathology, the Manovikaras. But while coming to the treatment part, there is no mention of uh, Rajohara, Tamohara, Aushadas directly. But it is uh, the only mention of one Triguna would be Sattva, but that is in Sattva Avajaya Chikansa. Because when Sattva comes up, the other two goes out, goes down. We cannot, uh, we're not targeting Rajas alone. We're not targeting Tamas alone. That is the uh, explain. That is how, why it is not explained in treatment. Their treatment aspects and all. I guess we can explore tomorrow on a better level. Now we go uh, for inferring the Trigunas in various contexts, other than what is mentioned. So we have started the presentation with Swastha Lakshana. Hope you remember it. Uh, maybe this had been too long and you would have forgotten it. So, Swastha Lakshana, Prasanna Atmendriya Mana. That is something you would remember. So, Swastha Lakshana, uh, what is it? Sama, Sama, Sama. 
all the samatvam how does this samatvam comes from how does this prasanna atmendriya mana comes from if all these things like sama dosha sama agni sama dhadu malakriya happens with the absence of prasanna atmendriya mana will will that purushan be swastha definitely not so there needs to be a optimal level of sattva guna in the purusha so that he becomes swastha and then the effects of shodhana See, Shodhana is the pain line of treatment mentioned in Unmada and Abhasmara Jigilsas. So we know that there is uh, uh, there is a high importance uh, to uh, Shodhana, uh, especially in uh, psychiatric disorders. But what the benefits are, in a, each Shodhana you can see benefits, some benefits on the level of minus. But I'm I'm going with one, one single phrase, that is Buddhi Prasadam Velamindriyana. This is mentioned in Ashtangarade Sutra Sthana, Mamana Virezana. Uh, chapter that is in uh, sutra sana itself uh, buddhi prasadam balam indriyana dadu sthiratam jalna siddhite so these are related to manas buddhi prasadam buddhi gets prasadam balam of the indriyas these are all attained after shodhana so how does shodhana act on the level of manas this is a big question so whenever there is uh, when shodhana is done the doshas are removed the kab especially the kapha pitta are removed there is uh, similarly there would be a removal of tamo rajo avarna raja tamo avarna at the level of manas and especially the tamas is something which causes avarna so when associated with the rajas also it it uh, it is mentioned rajo moha avardatmana is a samrapti of many psychiatric disorders so and this avarna would be removed that is why buddhi prasadam balam indriyana is mentioned so we can infer i guess we can infer that with samyak yogam we can infer sattvam mithya yogam tamas and adi yogam rajas there ends the theory portion of today's session next is going to be the practical aspects of uh, these things i am going to uh, present on various topics which are not directly related to clinics but it will help in a better understanding of ourselves and uh, the people around us the children around us and uh, about the universe in uh, in a different way these are, i'm not saying that these are uh, I'm, I'm i don't have enough evidence to show that this is it this is it because this is very subtle and we need to infer many things so these are all inferences rather and uh, they can be said as these are hypotheses also so i hope this uh, theory part is clear maybe i would have gone a little faster because the time is less and i'm sorry but uh, the next part you are going to view the practical aspects in certain life situations first thing is related to ahara Aharam, we say Satvika Rajas and Tamasika Aharam. And uh, we always uh, say that you should stop eating Rajasika Aharam and you should take in Satvika Aharam. So, where is it mentioned? It is again mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, that which that Ahara which provides eyes, Sattvam, Balam, and Arugim improves Sukha and Preeti. That which is Resya, tasty, Snigta, Stira, Hridya are Satvika Priya. See the term Satvika. Priya. This is very uh, important because um, these foods impart sattva guna to the sharira and these are liked by sattva guna yukta purusha. That is the meaning, sattva priya. That is liked by sattva purusha. They provide ayus balam and every, every positive quality. See, they, it provides preeti. Preeti is a factor of uh, sattva. Next, Rajasa. Rajasa Prayam. Kaddu Amla Levana Tushna Tishna Ruksha Vidahina. Uh, Ahara Rajasa, Rajasa Ishta Dukkha Shoga Amaya Prada. That which causes Dukkha Shoga Amaya, which is, you know, high spicy things, but very attractive things. When we go through some streets, when there is uh, these hotels which, uh, which uh, gives tandoori chicken and all, it, it seems very attractive. So these uh, attractive things, but eventually causing Dukkha, Shoga and Amaya are the Rajasiga, Rajasapriya. These are liked by Rajasa people. And while having this, there will be increase in Rajasiga uh, Guna. Tamasapriya. See, look at the picture. You will be feeling awkward looking at the picture. That is what Tamasa is like. That is what Tamasa people like to eat. 
that is uh, old cook before one yama that is one i'm sorry that is one uh, one yama gadarasa poodi parishudam himam uchishtam cha amethyam cha that is uh, takes less rotten Padishudam, uh, Himam, Uchishtam, Amethim, everything that is rotten, leftover, uh, that is not at all good to eat, comes under Tamasapriya Ahara. So if a person resorts to these kind of foods, we also even uh, resorts to these kind of foods because we cook food in the morning and we eat at night. That That is again causing Tamasa Vritti in Sharira. So these are the mentioning of foods. So if we want to uh, inculcate the Satyuga Ahara. We can directly go for Satyuga Ahara and have it. But there is a specific condition. That is where Ayurveda has a rule. There is a specific condition that is uh, with respect to Ayurveda. We will see that. So these are the Sattva Rajasthama Ahara we have seen. Shira Krita are best examples of Satyuga Ahara. So what is that Avastha? Which enables the the so-called satvika ahara to become satvika in sharira kadomla lavana uh, will be rajasa in sharira old and damage will cause a tamas in sharira but certain conditions when uh, even ha while having kadomla lavana ahara uh, some people may not be affected so much uh, with rajasa guna and tamas again so what is this avastha the specific avastha which ayurveda gives so much importance to is the agni just all dependent on Agni Bala, that how these things we take in act. If we take in Satyuga Haras like Shira and Krita for increasing the Satya Guna in our uh, Manas, suppose we have very less of Agni Bala, what happens? It won't be digested. So will that turn out to be Satyuga? The Sukshma Amsha of Ahara turns out to be Manas, says Chandyoga Upanishad. But will that turn out, turn out to be Satyuga? Definitely not. Satyuga is Lekhu and Amam is Guru. So when we have the Satyuga Ahara with less of Agni, they can become Tamasika. This is the beauty of Ayurveda. This is where we can... Uh, the, we can have an integration of see, the other signs, uh, taking what is Satyuga from Bhagavad Gita and integrate the principles of uh, Ayurveda and give it to the patient. So we can go with the references of Jora where uh, Shira should be given, where Gruda should be given. And exactly at that point only it will become Satyuga. Next is the context of Nidra. That's a cycle of day and night. Uh, because Nidra is related to the cycle. So these questions are uh, mo most often asked by the new generation people. Why is waking up so early important? Why can't I uh, wake up late? Why is sleeping early important? What does this notion of living in tune with nature mean? Does it have any significance, especially with respect to Trigunas? So this is day and night. And there's a junction. This junction is Santhya. So this day transforms into night at the at the point of Santhya. So day is what? Day, is, day has Prakasham. Day has Prakasham means it is predominantly of Sattva Gunadhikya in the universe. And night has darkness. Darkness uh, implies night. That is Tamas. And there is a shift from the Sattva Guna Adhikya of the universe to the Tamoguna Adhikya of the universe. Similarly, in our Sharira also, because of Loga Bursha Samyam, this shift happens from Sattva to Tamas. So living in tune with nature means we have to get up when the external environment is Sattva and we have to go to sleep when the external atmosphere becomes Tamasika. That is why Nidra is caused due to Tamas. Darkness is always Tamas. And then what happens at this juncture? This is very important because we have many, many uh, uh, superstitions, uh, many beliefs related to Santhya, especially in Kerala, uh, that the Santhya, ka Santhya Kalam, especially girls are not allowed to go out during this time. No one is uh, supposed to go out, but girls are usually not allowed to go out during Santhya Kalam. Pregnant women are not go allowed to go out. And uh, if a person is 
alpasatwa uh, he has less of salpa bala he is not uh, permit he, he, it's not advisable to uh, him to go out so is this a superstition so this kala that is a transformation of sattva and tamas to tamas this transformation is aided by rajas every transformation is aided by rajas so during this period there is a rajas and tamas the tamas is coming up only rajas is there predominant and then what happens if there is rajas and tamas in the andariksha in the environment it will happen in the sharira also thus if a person with raja tamo adhikya in sharira <coughs> goes and explores you know what is outside he he further improves his jala guna so that the rajas goes to such a high level and this raja increase will causes instability in his mind that is why many of the grahabada we see during this this time this is a uh, this is i guess why uh, because of this shift this rajas and tamas cannot be accommodated in a person where there is already very less of sattva guna so this person can become so instable because he cannot accommodate to this shift so this condition can be seen this situation can be uh, detrimental to, to some other somatic diseases also so the ancient people has had a better understanding of this that is why they they uh, had even restricted learning ayurveda as restricted learning also gamanam so okay uh, but even studying at this time is not all, also uh, encouraged and then we are sit and we are supposed to sit and pray what does prayer do prayer increases the sattva guna so we can better adapt to the uh, shift we can you know bring a balance to the rajas and tamas that is why similarly the morning samdhya also there is a shift from tamas to the sattva of the day time which is aided by rajas so there is a samdhya in between and during this samdhya what happens tamas is predominant along with tamas rajas comes to the picture and then slowly slowly sattva comes up so i guess this is one reason why we hear many many of somatic diseases also uh, during that time stroke heart attack and many, many incidents we hear that is related to uh, this san santhya morning santhya we, we have enough uh, patients like uh, stroke patients especially who develops stroke at this time i guess this is one explanation this is one way of viewing it that is why their uh, sattva de dhama hrudayam would have been mentioned next we come to the uh, another superstition that is uh, amavasi what is amavasi all about when when indians hear about the word amavasi they it's it's a negative term for uh, indians that is the no uh, new moon day and there is higher incidence of deaths epilepsy violent behavior of insane ones exacerbation of somatic ailments especially asthma these things are all noted uh, during the days of amavasi here and there but uh, what is it a superstition or is it just uh, Uh, is it just a coincidence i guess we can explain or we can try to explain on the basis of trigunas amavasa amavasi and pournami these are paksha santis you know the lunar cycle of 28 days 14 and 14 in between there will be a santhi there will be a junction that's the uh, no moon a uh, new moon and full moon days that is amavasi and pournami what happens is that again like how we saw the shift during the nire and night there is a shift from tamas to sattva which is aided by rajas this happens in the universe this happens in man so this shift is more pronounced this uh, tamo vritti is more pronounced during the night of amavasi so this shift again will be difficult for those people with very less of sattva and they might find it difficult to survive so if a, if a person is about to die if a person is uh, about to die there would probably be an increase in tama tamas in his uh, manas so what happens 
when there is already a lot of tamas and there is already avarnam and the person is in a stage of confusion coma what, whatever you can say that in a stupor or so and there is less chance of he coming out of uh, the tamas during the day of amavasi so that is why the ancient people have uh, have said this day as a very uh, very critical day and then develop certain uh, certain uh, spiritual as well as uh, physical programming uh, that developed as that further developed as religious practices so this is all scientific i guess and if we can start viewing things as all the things especially in the universe with respect to trigunas we can get a better understanding so this is what amavasi is and especially in kerala we have a month the last month the rainy season karkadagam it is called in malayalam uh, the amavasi of karkadagam is called karkadaga vaavu uh, we generally say that it is difficult to difficult for the old chronic um, illness uh, people people with chronic illnesses to pass this day alive it's very difficult because there is so much of tamas in the atmosphere and that again is in varshartu varshartu charaga says tridosha kopam so tridosha kopam is there along with there is uh, this tamas and then the shift causes increase in rajas so it can affect the marmas and it can lead to death that is uh, the importance of amavasi the the shift happens also during purnami but uh, in the opposite way next is with respect to prakriti prakriti is uh, what we have discussed so there so we can go into a situation where we consider different children so there are certain tendencies of different prakritis so we can uh, understand these manasika prakritis and helps in bringing up children in a better way see look at this picture there are different kind of people i guess only one person with a uh, satvika bhava the others uh, seem to be rajasika predominantly uh, one or two people maybe with uh, satvika the black uh, shirt and the uh, red and blue jacket next uh, we'll see a hypothetical situation where there are three children in a house satvika rajas and tamasam will they like like the same food definitely not they'll they'll need different foods because satvika priya tamasa priya rajasa priya their likings will be different so they will adopt the rajasa uh, child will adopt the junk foods the mixture the uh, all the junk foods spicy things he, he'll go with more of pickles and he will he might add more of lavana into his diet so that is that is how uh, their their manas will demand and tamasa maybe eating late uh, comes at uh, after comes after all the people have gone uh, from the dining room and then eat something which is rotten and then he don't like the good food the healthy stuff satvika will be liking the healthy stuff so uh, how can we incorporate this into practice we can if possible we can give a uh, bit more satvika ahara to rajasa and tamasa children especially so that their satva increases and uh, their rajas and tamas can be kept under control so how will the satvika child generally be like there will be the polite kid polite kid and the rajas will be naughty and playful tamasa will be lazy and not interested in homework kind of child <laughs> this is what people are people are different and they are unique also and what what happens if a mother who does not know these things bring up the child most of the time uh, the tamasa child will be compared with the others and he'll be he'll be scolded again and again and again and again and then there's no use because he'll he'll remain lazy and this tamasa child uh, will be asked to be like their rajasa or satvika siblings but um, he cannot be he he is the tamasic kind and it's difficult for him to come out of his tamasika state uh, so with help we can nurture uh, satvika and rajasa uh, elements into uh, tamasa child and help him come out of his situation and then the rajasa child also if he is compared to a satvika child most of and there will be a sibling rivalry because they will never like uh, comparisons they think they are they are superior they are, have this man dambha etc so comparisons never work so identifying each child based on their predominant manasika 
പ്രകൃതി ഓർ ഭാവ വിൽ ഹെൽപ്പ് ഇൻ ബെറ്റർ നർച്ചറിങ് ഓഫ് ദീസ് ചിൽഡ്രൻ ബ്രിങ്ങിങ് അപ്പ് സോ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഇസ് കോമൺ എക്സാമ്പിൾ എവറി വൺ നോസ് അബൌട്ട് ദിസ് ബട്ട് ഐ ജസ്റ്റ് ആഡഡ് ഇറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് പ്രജ്ഞാപരാധം സി ദി സ്മഗ്ലിംഗ് ട്രെയിൽ ഗേൾ ഗാങ് റേപ്പ് കറപ്റ്റ് ജഡ്ജ് അഗെയിൻ ഗാങ് റേപ്പ് സിക്സ് ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് ദീസ് ആർ ഓൾ പ്രജ്ഞാപരാധ വെയർ ഡിസ് പ്രജ്ഞാപരാധ കം ഫ്രം ചരക സെയ്സ് ഇൻ ഹിസ് വിമാനസ്ഥാനം ജനപദ ഉത്ഥാംസം ദാറ്റ് പ്രജ്ഞാപരാധം അറൈസസ് ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് അധർമ്മ അധർമ്മ ഇസ് എ റൂട്ട് കോസ് So what is Atharma? Atharma is an indicator of Tamas. So there is a universal, no, not universal, I say uh, national level maybe uh, or a district level of you know, increase in Tamas. So that there is uh, increase in criminal activities. So uh, when there is increase of Rajas, it will go into an activity, into a criminal act. Because Tamas has Adharma Shirata. Rajas has no intention of like Adharma Shirata. They just want to be, uh, they just want to be good themselves. But uh, Adharma Shirata coupled with the activity of Rajas can go into such instincts. And then Kama is a feature of Rajas. So what, uh, where is Kama evident here? It is in rape. Uh, rape, when there is so much Kama, along with that, when there is Arati, then there is when there's moha then the person can go into uh, rape so this is about pratyabrada and then see we, if we keep on looking at it keep on looking at the negative news again and again from morning till the evening we'll keep on hearing the news about how many people died today out of covid how, how many people are gang raped how many girls are gang, gang raped how many uh, murder so are done throughout the country and in our state and how that murder is planned how that uh, murder is executed etc if we keep on going to the news bus again and again it is going to create a raja tamo vritti in our minds also eventually we might think that this is all normal and our satguna will increase over a course of time it again depends upon how much satguna we has we have that is a person if uh, if he is having good satguna may may not be affected so much by these news but eventually this is what is happening next is uh, learning with respect to learning also there will be different kinds of learning sattva rajas and tamas sattva is endowed with uh, intellectual properties like metha dhi and prati so the composed type and truth seeking way of uh, learning rajas is uh, malsara you know the basic uh, factor is competitiveness they are ambitious and tamas uh, has buddhi nirodha they are no no interest in learning they are the procrastinators this is a satvika girl studying next is uh, this is a rajas typical rajas see how she goes for the cup and this is the tamasa and next coming to relationships there's a few instances you can uh, go for an, another instances R- relationships also satvika will be a compassionate person rajasa will be a passionate person he has kama he has the raga he is sangha towards one specific or one or more uh, uh, people and then tamasa has uh, no particular feelings he is you know in his own world in his his own confusion so uh, when while, while forming relationships also this is very important because uh, satvika purusha satvika purusha can go with anyone if he can retain his level of satva he can be with everyone but a rajasa purusha when he is coupled with a uh, rajasika uh, partner it is going to be a very egoistic kind of uh fights are going to be there if it's if it's love it's going to be a passionate relationship but then uh, in business endeavors and all if rajasa people are coming together there are high chances of uh, ego there are high chances of uh, this possess possessions they one will fight for you know money or something and then tamasa people when they come together they, there is uh, no nothing good coming out of them they, rather they are um, you know going into more of inactivity when it comes to patient uh, interactions i'm not going to details because uh, the clinical part will be discussed tomorrow in one session so um, but i'll say three points only first we said uh, what a rajasika person will be like he'll be like wandering fi- don't know where the op is and he finds out the op and he goes into some other op and he comes back he is confused as to whether to give the op ticket whether if he should see the doctor or not everything he 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 is very restless and uh, this chala guna vritti can be seen and the tamasika person may not show up 
the bystander comes and say that uh, say my son is having this ailment and then he is not a ready to come to the op and meet the doctor and he is not ready to come out of his illness then we can infer tamasika vritti uh, in the person interactions uh, rajika person will be uh, talking too much about his illness and he can lie also he he can you know he says whatever it comes to his uh, his mouth that is how he is like and the tamasika is a ignorant type he may not even discloses full history response to the doctor when doctor says something the rajika person be like uh, responding according to his ego he'll say uh, you know, i can go for exercise but i cannot go with food restrictions because i am this kind of a person who uh, who takes this kind of a diet and i am used to it it does not cause my disease i know where what my disease is and i know how to control it this is will be this is the sometimes the attitude of rajika persons and then uh, again confused also and uh, tamasika persons will be the mostly the dropouts of treatment so we if we need to understand the rajasika and tamasika bhavas of a patient we need to the bishak should be having a high level of sattva so that uh, we we can differentiate uh, what is uh, which bhava the patient is in uh, which prakriti the patient is in uh, so it is very important this is the last example of the practical uh, practical aspects of trigunas which with which we come to the conclusions so rajas is a term term used of synonymous with arthva so i am uh, asking whether there is a relation any relation to rajoguna rajaswala is the bleeding uh, face of uh, the girl in the bleeding face so is there any relation to rajoguna of the manas what is premenstrual distress these are the few things we are uh, we are starting to explore more about so rajas is of course is synonymous with arthava but rajas essentially means rajoguna in manas so what happens when there is this uh this phase that is a bleeding phase we know that uh, during menstrual distress there are mood swings associated with there are mental symptoms associated with this and there are many divorces that happens in usa because of menstrual distress and then husbands cannot understand their partners so uh, these mood swings are of course not due to sattva they are, they are of course due to swings you know there is chala chala guna so they are of course uh, due to some underlying rajo dosham so there is uh, some amount of rajas increased in the sharira with respect to this bleeding phase so what happens before before the bleeding before the uh, bleeding phase there is a proliferation of the endometrium so this phase maybe there is uh when there is pitta rakta uh, vritti in the uterus level there is increased in rajas in the level of manas how we can understand this is that through through the slogan the acharya has explained that uh pums kamam vidyat rudumatim striya pums kamam kama is a feature of rajas pums kamam that is attraction towards the opposite sex that is a feature which is uh, pointing towards the rajoguna that is not just a arthava that's rajoguna that is the manas level that is why maybe the menstrual distress has got this uh, confusion and mood swings at the uh, in 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 that and then what our rudumadhi charya is our rudumadhi charya is uh, rest for the 3 days first 3 days and uh, head bath is also uh, prohibited so what what we see nowadays is that even the uh, even in the uh, notion of uh, feminists be like uh, we can do many things we we don't want an exception we can do many activities during the time of periods but it is that good is that really what is needed if it is so why did the acharyas give so much restrictions during the period of this bleeding phase especially that is because this pitta rakthavrti this rajo guna vritti is all physiological we have to keep our system in a way that the normal physiology happens what happens if we go out and uh, if the girls go out and dance like the sanitary napkin models do what happens is that there is a further increase in chala guna so this further increase in chala guna might not be uh, suitable 
for the rajaswala there should be an optimal level so for this purpose only maybe the acharyas have mentioned the rudhumadicharya restricting the activities of girls so it's not actually a restriction it's a prescription so i think ayurveda doctors need to have more understanding on this subject because uh, even uh, we think that we can go and do whatever we like so maybe this is one reason so coming closer to the end what is the importance of rajas and tamas we we give so much importance to sattva so all the three gunas are needed rajas is needed for activity and for attaining purusharthas tamas is needed because inertia is also needed we need to rest we need to sleep so that we can they can be fresh the next day and we can go for the activity so if a person who is uh, who has to do some activity if he keeps on praying and praying and praying keep on doing the pujas and he is not going out and doing his work what happens his sattvagana would increase but it's not of much uh, use to the others because he has to do his job so for doing his job rajas has to be uh, there so uh, it's not that rajas and tamas are bad rajas and tamas has an existence at the level of guna as well as it it becomes uh, exceedingly high it can go into the uh, dosha level so all the three gunas are needed and uh, we need to adapt uh, such practices such ahara vihara so that and such understanding of rajas and tamas so that we can keep the three gunas in balance so further knowledge is needed in in depth analysis of trigunas trigunas with respect to deva bhashya yukti vibhashya and sattva vidya chikitsa deva bhashya especially mantras yukti vibhashya especially the meithi rasayanas and sattva vidya chikitsa of course and uh, how the interplay is of sharirika and manasika doshas in prakriti and vikruti happens like vada and rajas and pitta and rajas and these things have to be made clear i uh, wish and i hope with tomorrow session uh, we'll come to a better understanding of all these i don't think the video will be working no we, this video is still not working okay mm, so come to the conclusion sattva rajas and tamas is the very basis of all creation the workings of human minds are based on trigunas however ayurveda sees uh, the workings of human mind through the eyes of trigunas with this uh, webinar we uh, encourage all of you to see uh, the human mind through the eyes of uh, trigunas so understanding of trigunas will help in character formation because dhitairi atma divijnanam manodosha aushadam param so i guess uh, you would have got a idea of what these three gunas are how it becomes pathological in which all situations it can be applied i don't think there is any situation which it cannot be applied it can be applied in any situations but uh, how the understanding helps in um, character formation uh, is because when we we have a better understanding of ourselves our character changes self examination itself is a very big tool for changes uh, in our lives so that our interpersonal relationships also changes and then um, our way of bringing up children way of understanding children way of understanding uh, the teachers if they understand the students based on rajas and tamas and sattva it will be better because uh, because comparisons can be uh, decreased and then uh, we can bring up a better balance uh, in the society so this was again a video i don't think it will be working thank you thank you so for so much for the patient listening because there had been so much um, confusions regarding the technical problems uh, it's the first national level of webinar we are doing and uh, on the behalf of guys i say uh, we are very sorry for all the trouble uh, we had during the first session but thank you so much for uh, hearing till the end Thank you, Dr. Arya, for covering all the aspects of trigunas in this lecture, and thank you for your thought-provoking address and for making an excellent presentation and making this webinar a very meaningful and interesting one. Okay, doctor, we have got some queries for from participants, so let's discuss it now. Yeah. Okay, there is a question from Dr. Anu Tiyas. Question is that. Can we balance trigunas with medications or with non-pharmacological measures? Yes, because trigunas are present in medicines. Be it uh, kashtaushadi, be it rasaushadi, be it uh, the non-pharmacological methods. Uh, 
it is present everywhere it is present in everything so we can of course uh, uh, you know in, increase or decrease the trigunas or bring up the sattva or bring down the rajas based on uh, medicine and other methods sure that's sure yes and especially methirasana those medicines acting on the mind will help it better because it has the uh, site specificity okay then another question is from dr athira ms question is that can we change the personality of a person by changing triguna pattern in mind yeah that is already discussed yes okay then another question is that drishti is near atmika that helps the individual to control mind from unwanted things yeah. that then when uh, uh, what is the role of tamas as niyamak as niyamaka yes uh, because uh, how important is sleep if you don't sleep well for 3 days what happens that is uh, it again depends on your dosha prakriti also it again depends upon your uh, satvika amsha also but uh, if you don't give enough rest say compare your body with a car uh, so it keeps on it keeps on driving long drive long drive long drive do not stop what happens at the at the uh, before reaching maybe before reaching the destination it breaks down that is how we are like if our bodies goes on and on and on without giving proper rest at appropriate situations will break down before the actual destin reaching the actual destination that's all okay doctor thank you and another question is from dr ashwati question is could you explain two different functions of rajas and tamas one as manogunas and other as manodoshas mano doshas say there is a fine line between uh, mano gunas and mano doshas i guess uh, because to some extent say, take the uh, case of uh, rajas and um, a competitive examination so many people are preparing for a competitive examination so some people will be having predominance of rajas in them so how will they be they will be naturally competitive so this naturally competitive level of rajas will help them in uh, going through you know the classes easily they'll be uh, learning because they they will uh, find ways of um, coming up with uh, better learning techniques and they can easily cope up with it but uh, when it goes to such a high level because their uh, chala guna if their chala guna they keeps on learning and learning learning all the night and then they uh, reach a certain level that they cannot handle it themselves the over competitiveness uh, causes them to uh, feel uh, frustrated at some point because they they feel confused and then once uh, this happens uh, if they don't have the enough sattva guna tamas can come when tamas comes they'll go into confusion so they might uh, they would have been good performers in the competitive uh, examination classes you know entrance classes and then uh, before reaching the entrance exam they'll drop out because there is so much of rajas they cannot handle it and tamas again it's very difficult but um, it is there because tamas see, tamas is a predominant during night uh, when the universe is um, dark again so we have discussed this so if we give uh, rest and there is a natural level of uh, normal level of tamas in our body but then what happens if we do not get up in the morning uh, say past uh, the sunrise past 6 o'clock say uh, when the situation outside is sattva rajas uh, the situation is changed so this happens that we tend to sleep and we get up at 10 for example 10 a we get up and what happens there is a gradual build up of kapha we know that there is gradual build up of kapha but what happens at the level of mind is gradual build up of tamas so uh, if you have noted that when we uh, wake up late that day we'll be feeling a bit low in energy we'll again feel like sleeping that is how it will be like so there because that is because of tama dosha when tamo guna gives a proper rest tamo do when it changes to tamo dosha it can be like drowsiness throughout the day there will be drowsiness okay that's all thank you another question is from dr nag ratna uh, stm college okay. question is how to understand manasik prakriti in case of children with intellectual disability 
cerebral palsy, etc. Conditions whether underlying disease inference with it, especially the younger infants below one year of age. Uh, I guess it's going to be very different, difficult because uh, because when we have a raja tamo vritti uh, dosha vritti in sharira, it is going to be very very difficult as to understand uh, the normalcy of the patient because it's a pathological situation. See, this uh, conditions these conditions the children may not be communicating also. If they can communicate well, so we can ask them what do we like. So the child says, I like this, I like milk, I like this thing. I like if the child is going towards the sattuga things, is demanding sattuga things, we can say that okay, this child is sattuga. Basically, he is a sattuga nature. But even in normal children, it's difficult to understand because people will be uh, children will be normally playful. So there will be a, a, a level of regis in them. So we'll be uh, it will be difficult to understand in normal children. But when it comes to a pathological situation like a CP, cerebral palsy, very small children who cannot communicate what their uh, needs are. And again, their needs will be dependent on their pathological state. So it's very difficult because uh, it's it's not their pregnancy. It may not be their pregnancy. So it's very difficult to say that. Because even, see, if we uh, try to understand our own uh, Mansika Prakriti, it will be very difficult because we will have to think again and again. See, I used to be like this before college. I, I am like this be, uh, later. And it's very difficult to understand for ourselves also. Uh, so it's very difficult to be understood in children. That, that's what I think. Maybe uh, the next sessions tomorrow will give further information on that. And that is a good question. Okay, doctor. Since we have no sufficient time, we entering into the last question. The question is from Dr. Asa VC. Question is, day is divided into three with predominant dosha. We know first part with kapha, how we can connect this with tamas, arshatto, and first part morning, that is Brahma Muhurat. Brahma Muhurta, how can we connect with kapha? Kapha. Kabha, okay. Uh, that uh, can you say the question once again? I need to make it clear. Okay, sure. The doctor. day is divided into three parts, and then the day is divided into three predominant dosa. Yeah. We know first part with kapha. Yeah. How you can connect with this tamas or sattu on first part morning? That is Brahma Murat. Brahma Murta. That is there is a shift from tamas to sattu during the Brahma Murta, right? And then. Whenever, as it's already mentioned, whenever there is kabha predominance, we can infer tamas. So when there is a kabha predominance, there will be some amount of tamas in it. That is why we fail to get up in the morning. We we feel like sleeping in the morning uh, because most of us uh, find it difficult to get up during that time. But once we get up and once we cross this kabha kala, we'll find it easier to go through, sail through the day. That is how it is. So how this affects the mind is there is tamas and then when we pass through the stage of tamas with some amount of activity say physical activity say exercise uh, and some prayer and all the sattva raja adhikya uh, properties when we sail through the kapha period maybe we overcome the tamas also that's what i feel yeah very good question again okay thank you dr arya for your informative lecture now, as we have moved on to the last part of our section, may I now request Dr. Anu, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Department of Kai Siketsa, to deliver the vote of thanks. A very warm good evening to all, respected principal, T.D. Sriyuma sir, vice principal, Srija madam, Murli sir, Ramni madam, Shailama madam, and all other faculties and delegates. It is a great honor for me to deliver the vote of thanks on this occasion. First of all, let me thank our former HODs, Dr. Murli sir, Ramni madam, and also Shailama madam, HOD Kaitikilsa department, Government Ayurveda College, Pairiyaram, 
Kannur for lending a helping hand to us. We are highly indebted for your assistance all the time. I sincerely thank Dr. Sunil John, HOD Department of Kai Chigilsa for the huge support in conducting this webinar. I appreciate Dr. Arya Kayu, final year PG scholar, for contributing her best effort for presenting an excellent section on the topic Introduction to Practical Aspects of Triguna. I would like to thank our respected delegates for accepting our invitation and actively participating in the sessions and discussions. We are grateful to Dr. Janish, Assistant Professor, Siddhanta Department for devoting his time and energy for technical support to conduct this webinar. Last but not the least, I thank all the faculties, MO, PGs and UGs for the effort and pain taken behind this program to make it a great success. Hoping that this session have ignited your thoughts about Triguna so that we can have a brainstorming session in the upcoming webinar. Hoping all of your active participation. Once again, I thank you all for your esteemed presence and support for the pre-webinar section. Thank you. Thank you everyone for being with us in this beautiful evening and for your patience and also thanks for making this a successful event and uh, we would like to apologize for all the technical issues uh, that has happened in the beginning of the session. Thank you all.